Hello, this is Scott from Optics Realm. It's October 2011. Today is my second tutorial for ZMAX um, instruction. We're going to talk about the setting that's the system aperture. This is under the general command, the general tab, sorry. So this aperture here, how we set this, this is just an example. This isn't uh, ZMAX here. So again, you, you get this by the general button or control G. And there's several ways, there's several things that can pop up in there. The first one is entrance pupil diameter. So what you're doing is you're saying, shoot a, a grid of rays into the optical system that has this diameter here. So the value in the general aperture tab will be your on-axis value. Now I'm showing the entrance pupils being located here in the optical axis. In reality, this, this entrance pupil can be anywhere, and in most cases, it's buried within the optical system. What's going to happen with your aperture stop? You may say, like in a typical triplet, that this is your aperture stop. So if you specify the entrance pupil, ZMAX will compute what this aperture stop is. This is used when you're initially laying out a, an imaging system with an infinite conjugate. You don't know where the aperture stop is. You don't know what size it is. You just want to specify the entrance pupil diameter as opposed to float by stop size. So let's say, in this case, you know this is your aperture stop. You've got that set in ZMAX, and we'll go into this a little bit later. The value you set here, there is no value uh, in the general tab. You've just got a value set in your lens data editors, what that aperture value is. And ZMAX is going to determine what this entrance pupil is. This is used when you've got kind of a final design. You know where your stop is and what you, where your uh, um, what that stop diameter is. So let's give an example here. This is a Cook triplet, and this comes from this comes from you know my document Zmax sample sequential objectives. It's just this uh, twenty-eight degree double Gauss. So what do we have here? Right now we've got the aperture stop, and you know, notice I click on the stop. Let's get this cleaned up here. I click on the stop, and this this surface highlights. So that's one thing neat about ZMAX. You're in surface three, this surface gets highlighted here. So we've called this our stop. This is an iris, an internal iris here, and we don't have an aperture value. So let's check how that system aperture is set. It comes with an entrance pupil diameter, and it's setting it to 33 millimeter diameter. So this surface, or this beam right here, is 33 millimeters. Let's do float by stop size. Let's just show what that looks like. I'm going to get an error. Nope, no, I didn't. It sets your aperture here. It keeps the same entrance pupil diameter you have, but it specifies what this aperture stop is. And ZMAX is going to figure out, well, it's a 33 millimeter diameter. If I try and take this diameter off, it gives me an error. Stop diameter must be fixed if you're using float by stop size. So that's the difference. You can have um, float by stop size. And if we want to adjust the F number, we can come in and say 5. I'll update this, and it varies the um, working, uh, the F number. That's float by stop size. And again, this is, uh, this is another example. This is one of Edmund Optic's 5 megapixel camera lenses. When I first started the design of this, I just let it float by stop size. I knew my focal length. I knew my F number requirement. I was able to just set what the entrance pupil diameter is. And I didn't know where the stop was. I didn't know if the stop was going to be here or here. Ultimately, I ended up at this location. And this is the final. So when I started, I started with float by um, entrance pupil diameter. Once it was designed, I went to check it and do detailed analysis. I knew my aperture stop was here. I set a hard aperture here, and I did float by stop size. The other one is object space numerical aperture. Numerical aperture is defined as n sine theta, where n is the, the index in the uh, an object space. Usually air index will be 1. And this theta is the half angle. There's a reference uh, in Wikipedia. There's a reference on Wikipedia on what the numerical aperture is. So this NA, you set uh, the value in the aperture tab. There's also the object cone angle. 
this is this half angle here if you want to set the angle directly this is uh, kind of I was playing around with a microscope objective this is an apochromatic microscope objective image space F number and where is this used this is used if you've got an initial layout for an infinite conjugate and you know your F number you can just specify I want you know the value in the aperture tab the general aperture tab I want an F2 system this is considerably slower probably F5 Again, F number is your focal length divided by your entrance pupil. Really, it's a ratio of length to width of the beam. So it's a ratio of this length to this width or that diameter. And there's also the paraxial working F number. And you can specify the paraxial working F number in the general tab. Again, it's a ratio of length, length to width. And this is used when you've got a finite conjugate. So this is a Cook triplet with some finite conjugate. Your image is going to move to aft, uh, refer, refer you to the lens maker's equations or the nomograph um, videos I have to, to demonstrate that. And just as an example here, I wanted to quickly talk about working F number. What is working F number? Well, recall F number for an infinite conjugate is defined as your focal length divided by your entrance pupil diameter. When you change conjugates, you're going to get a different magnification. Magnification is the ratio of the image to object diameter or image uh, distance to object distance. And Grievenkamp in his field guide to geometric optics defines the working F number as 1 minus your magnification times your F number or your infinite F number of focal length by entrance pupil diameter. This magnification is usually negative, and it's negative due to the image inversion. Now, Wikipedia defines, and they've recently changed this definition, as 1 plus the absolute value of magnification. This takes care of some of the sign confusion. I'm going to reiterate what the homework was from number one. I'd like you to construct a first-order microscope in ZMAX using um, paraxial lenses. No eyepiece. An eyepiece would normally sit up here and you'd have an eyeball. This is just going to go to a detector array. So I say use an infinity-corrected 200-millimeter tube lens. This is your tube lens. It's 200 millimeters. Infinity-corrected between your objective and your tube lens, it's, it's infinite. In some cases, you've got um, converging light here. This is 10 power. The NA is 0.2, so down here is 0.2, and just axial only, just an on-axis beam. We've not talked about field yet. We've not talked about wavelengths. We'll get there. I want you to just lay out this simple on-axis beam. This is Scott again. Thanks for uh, tuning in.